Hi, I'm Peter Bumpus with Chicknick Anglers. Heartbeat Alaska will be right back. <laughs> so I'll just stand there. <laughs> okay, so first of all, can you um, tell me your name and spell it for me? Uh, Don Bumpus, B U M P U S. Okay, D O N. D O N, yes. Okay, okay. Um, do you have a title that you want after that? No? no. Okay, some people do. Um, okay, how long have you lived here in Chicago? I've. Lived here so uh, 30 years, 74. Was a Tell me a little bit about uh, Chignik Lagoon 30 years ago. Well, Chignik Lagoon 30 years ago was a totally different, uh, it was like a wide open town, you know. There wasn't, uh, we didn't have the uh, police force back then that we do now. and. Uh, Things have modernized, uh, if you can call it that, uh, quite a bit in 30 years. But uh, people's way of uh, doing business and uh, just day-to-day -day life has gotten uh, easier and harder. Um, up until Oh, 1990. You know, we never hardly had to worry about making a living or anything like that. And then, then the uh, bumps started hitting us, and uh, a lot of us uh, um, lost our boats. And uh, you know, it was just tough. You know, you get you never have two bad seasons in a in a row. I, I, this this season here is the third season this year. And I've uh, never seen, we've had bad seasons and a couple of good ones, but nothing like we've seen here lately. Um, and then fish price has been down too. Well. Fish price, you know, every, I mean, everybody, everyone has their theories on that. Um, uh, it's, you know, from price fixing up to uh, Exxon Valdez oil spill, you know, nobody, I feel knows really why. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you have any idea, like, I, I've talked to a couple of people, they don't really know, um, how the village of uh, Chignik got started? Well, uh, you know, there's, there's old village sites all around this lagoon, but there used to be a, a cannery here that was built in the 1880s, I think. Um, I think a man by the name of Mintz, I just found this out here a couple of weeks ago, uh, built this cannery and then uh, I think Alaska Packers acquired it from him uh, somewhere along the line there. And uh, the stories that my mother-in-law used to tell, she used to go to school here in the summer because they were, they used to trap all winter and they'd have to come in here. And uh, they, uh, uh, went to school where the parents worked on the traps or, or at the cannery, and and I think the village uh, just started springing up here. Okay, so really then, the the village of Chignik Lagoon as it is today um, was built on fishing. Oh yes, yeah, um, yeah. 
I think. Uh, sorry, could you could you say that for me or something to that effect? Uh, yeah. Well, most of your, I, from what we've found, you know, I like I like the beachcomb and, and the old village sites uh, that you run into are places where they're. Uh, well, this doesn't have a southern exposure, but most a lot of them did have a you know sun in the winter, or it was easy access to uh, uh, shellfish and and uh, you know subsistence uh, food. Uh, that's that's where you find a lot of them around clam beds, and, uh, sea otter hung out and stuff like that. Um, today, what's the what's the main and uh, job. What's the what's the main industry here? It's it's salmon. Uh, uh, we um, we started cod fishing here. Well, actually, I started in 1991. Winter fished here three years. Then we lost our market. Uh, the the they stopped buying here, and then our state fishery I think picked up in '96 or '7 somewhere along there, and we've been doing that. Uh, Actually, we're making as much, if not more, cod fishing than we are salmon. It, uh, and that's and the codfish market's getting real shaky now. You know, it's it it's tough. So it's pretty much salmon now for the rest of the. Yeah, we we are working twice as long now to make half the money we used to make in three months. That, that's what's happening now. And um, is it is it has it pretty much been salmon for as long as you can remember? Oh yeah, salmon was the that's all we did. A lot of us, uh, I shouldn't say a lot of us, but um, a few of us uh, went into other. You know, in the in the winter time, uh, we 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 uh, lived in Kodiak at that time when I first came here. And we either winter fished over there, you know, crab, shrimp, uh, whatever. Or uh, I got into uh, construction, you know. And uh, and then just here the last 10 years, I, I was long hauling in the States. Uh, uh, okay, well, tell me tell me a little bit about the co-op. You're, you're in the co-op. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Tell me um, how it got started and why it got started well we were we were going broke you know it uh, uh, I for one don't care for this style of fishing you know it, it's just a uh, it's uh, the the whole salmon industry is just it's not there anymore you know uh, our, our runs are we, we can't tell from one year to the next where the runs gonna be worth anything and then we're dealing with this 35 to 50 cents a pound stuff and uh, so even even if you get 50 cents a pound you still have to have the volume to to make a living you know and uh, and fifty thousand dollars that uh, that's a break-even deal there I mean our I mean if you've got a boat to uh, you know, twenty-five thousand dollar boat payment, ten thousand dollar insurance, and thirty percent of your uh, uh, gross goes to your crew. You don't have anything left, you know. So, so you got to put that volume in just to to break even. Actually, fifty thousand dollars is a, is a real light figure. It's it's more than that. So. Um how, how did it come about then? Like who? Well, these uh, Aaron Aaron Anderson and uh, uh, Axel Copen and Jamie Ross and a few of the other boys. George Anderson, I think, was involved. Uh, uh, approached the state, uh, the Board of Fish, and asked for an allocation figure so the co-op uh, would receive so many percent of that return per permit holder uh, one percent nine uh, point nine percent depend the first year was uh, the the co-op would bring in point nine we had a hundred permits so it made it fairly easy the percentage thing so each area. yeah that um, 
we brought 0.09% of the return in to the co-op for each member that joined. Okay. So if we had, uh, I think the numbers we had the first year was 77 uh, members, and I think I think the allocation was like 69% with 77 members. Could you explain the allocation thing to me? Well, it's just, just the uh, the allocation is is a percentage of the return that goes to each permit holder. Okay. And uh, it, it we felt, or or the the organizers of this things felt that we needed we we couldn't we couldn't operate without an allocation, plain and simple. It wouldn't to have a free for all. The uh, quality that. Uh, has come about because of the way we handle these fish now. Would you, you couldn't do it if you had to uh, compete for them in, in the uh, fashion that we we're accustomed to. I mean, we're bringing. I used to lift three, four hundred fish at a time and dump them in the hole, you know, and it bruises them and uh, squishes them and marks them up and Taro takes the scales off and uh, and. Uh, the way we do it now, it's we make a haul. We have a catcher boat who makes a haul. The tender comes up. Either it, either those fish are pumped off or brailed off into uh, chilled water, and uh, the dead ones, and then the live ones are uh, uh, put into uh, circulating water that uh, has oxygen injected into it to keep them alive until they they uh, butcher them at the plant. So the quality has went from, like, I think the numbers I remember was 77, 78% up to 90%. Uh, that's the difference between the number ones. So it's, you, we've really seen the improvement. Okay. So the allocation thing was really for um, the quality of the product? Yes. Thereby? Yes. I mean, and what was the... Well, the race for fish thing, you know, if, if, if you... You've got to take that equation out of it. I mean, that part of the equation out to make this quality thing work. Because if you got and and we use less boats to harvest the fish, so um, I think we've got uh, 18 or 19 this year harvesters and uh, 10 tenders, and then uh, that overhead, um, the uh, which is. A lot. You, I mean, we we spend anywhere from four to eight thousand dollars worth of just on fuel, and then your uh, your insurance. Of course, you still that insurance doesn't go away, but uh, layup your insurance is cheaper, and uh, it, it's 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 an overhead thing. You get you get better quality and less overhead using a few boats to harvest these fish now. And so um, when they proposed the, uh, the allocation to... Uh, okay, so... Um, okay, so uh, when uh, the people that, were, that started the co-op or that got the thing going were proposing these allocated days, um, they were saying it was because of... It was to present a higher quality to the, the last consent, you know. And to be able to harvest the fish without competing with another group. I mean, uh, there, people had a choice of either being with a co-op or on their own, just like they used to be. But um, there was a, a an argument there about equal access. Now, each person is entitled to whatever part of the resource is the next person. There's no divvying up and and uh, that's where they uh, it changed this year it's an it's an it's one percent each person is one percent and that happened just because we reached a, a plateau I think it was 85 boats and once we reached 85 permits I mean um, then it went to equal shares but the only way that this thing would work was was uh, allocated the fishery. Um, but um, what I, I guess what I'm what I'm wondering is like it was proposed to the board of fish. 
right. that, that's who decided. That, that was the main thing that was at, at the first Board of Fish, I think it was three or four years ago. Uh, actually, it was four winters ago. That was the number one thing, I think, that uh, the co-op went after, was that allocation. When, when it was presented to them, um, what, what incentive was there for the Board of Fish to, um, to give you an allocation? Like, why did they care if the co-op succeeded? Well, because of the the rest of the, the fisheries around the state. I mean, I mean, we've 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 got uh, you know, uh, especially southeast. I mean, there's plants uh, closing up down there. Uh, uh, Fifty percent of the uh, fleet is without markets. Uh, even if they wanted to go fishing, they couldn't. And it's and it's progressively gotten worse. I mean, uh, CWF, uh, Columbia Wards Fisheries, is no more. They've they've sold out. Uh, Norquest was uh, sucked up by Trident here this winter. Uh, just, just a lot of uh, people without markets, and a few of these young people. Well, we've all seen this happening here the past six to eight years, and there was a group of young fellows here that decided to do something about it, and uh, we've had this. Uh, Salmon Task Force, which has, I think, just disbanded this uh, this spring, trying to find different ways to uh, enhance this fishery, and, and it's and it's a hard thing to do. The uh, we've th we're just <clears throat> kind of nickel and diamond it now, but we've we've we're sending fish to England and New York and to small, you know, thousand twenty five hundred pound orders but people are finding out about these fish now and we have a three-month fishery here where a place like Copper River is only three or four weeks you know where they're they're reds and that's the supposed to be the primo red you know in the spring highest pain fish uh, so uh, and we're trying to do something like that actually I think Sand Point is too I can't remember the name of their their uh, brand out there, but they're doing something like that too. Um, so when um, when you were first getting this, or when they were first getting this thing started, and uh, they were proposing the allocated days to the to the board of fish, they said um, in order to like keep the supply, in order for everybody to stay open and keep the supply of of fish being pumped out of Alaska this needed to happen or is that is that kind of the argument that they had? Or? Well no the argument was was we're going broke uh -huh. and we want to try something new. Uh, um, we've been after our legislators and and depending on other people to uh, make our survival possible and <clears throat> I think it's pretty hard for a person that doesn't really know the business to fix it if they don't know how to how it works, you know. So, some young people uh, they decided to try something. They presented it to the state, and and here we are. It uh, it's 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 not fun, but we're making a few bucks. You know, we're surviving. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked with a couple other people, you know, independents. And, uh -huh. um, their their main complaint with it is is that they. They don't feel that they'd be able to survive, you know, financially in the co-op. And now that there's the allocated days, they're not going to be able to survive out of the co-op. So basically, it's driving them out of business. Um, well, you know, you can argue and argue and argue one one thing or another. I I don't blame those folks for doing what they're doing. But I don't think it gives them the right to throw rocks at me for what I think is best for myself and my family. Uh, I uh, I do more than just salmon fish, you know. It's, uh, salmon fishing is not going to be the way it's been when we were young people. I mean, we're not going to see one, two, three dollars a pound for those fish uh, for a while, if it, if it ever happens. And 
uh, I can guarantee you right now the, the three seasons of, that we are, it looks like we're going to have three seasons, but uh, one right after another. If you had 60 or 80 boats, there's 100 of us, if you had 60 or 80 boats out here fishing those fish right now, nobody would be making any money anyways. I mean, we'd be shut down just as many days because those fish, they get uh, sucked up all in one shot, and then you got to wait for the escapement. The escapement is what governs our fishery here, whether we go fishing or not. I mean, we're down to, they've got us on a 3,000 fish limit here yesterday, and that went from 15,000. So uh, if you turn 80 boats loose out there and they suck up 100,000 fish and there's only uh, five to 10,000 fish coming into the lagoon every day, well, we're going to, and these numbers, these uh, goals that the fishing game needs through that weir keep climbing as the summer goes along, and there's still a, just a little trickle, we'll be sitting here doing what we're doing right now. And that part of it doesn't have anything to do with the co-op or anybody making a living. It's just, that's Mother Nature doing that. But it, it, uh, it's a sorry thing. You know, you know what's happened here. It's we. Uh, I mean, we have a hard time just affording one trip out to, to go uh, hunting, you know, or, or or berry picking in the fall. I mean, fuel's two dollars a gallon, and and uh, I mean, it's 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 a once a year thing now because you can't afford to do it. Um. Can you, uh, can you think of any other industries in, the, in America or in Alaska where they have, um, where they've done, um, like they've done here, where they allocate the amount of resources that can be, you know, that's divvied up between everybody equally? Can you, can you think of, was there a precedent for that or? Well, I, uh I don't know how the timber industry works. You know, I, I just heard something on the news here today where one of the southeast sawmills got a a, a timber track uh, or a track of timber. Now is, that's a lot, it isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I, I was asking because I well, don't I, know. I I really don't know. Um, is uh, you know these uh, oil sales, gas lease sales. Uh, I don't know if you consider that allotted or highest highest bidder wins or what it is, um, but as far as uh, that's that's a good point. I'll have to look into that and see if those are allotted too. Yeah, because I, I was just wondering if they had if there was like a precedent that they got their model from or something when they were doing the proposing, or if they just come up with it. You know? Yeah. Just curious as yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not the only industry that's getting that's hurting in Alaska. You know, logging has been happening to them for years. You know, and uh, it's just it's sad. You know, to I mean, I'd love to just keep it the way it was ten or fifteen years ago. It, it, it's a great life. I don't care to do this what we're doing, but it's just. Uh, a means to to the end, or uh, I hope it's not the end, but it's survival, plain and simple. Um, I don't look at it as fishing. It's a uh, nine to five to me. Yeah. Um, do you have suggestions for um, the, the independents that aren't in the co-op? Well, um, that's that's another problem because a lot of the <laughs> our our fishing fleet here is getting to be a bunch of old dinosaurs, and and uh, I can only think of two people out there right now that are under forty, and to go get an education, and and that and that's for some people that's out there. I mean, there's there's money for re-educating, but. Uh, for a person to be uh, re-educated for a job means they're going to have to leave this what they what they're 
that they love, yeah. you know, and it, it's kind of a catch-22 thing. Um, you got you have to leave to go to work somewhere else, somewhere else strange to you, and uh, that's what this thing is all about. I mean, all this this controversy that's going around is they love this place just like the rest of us, and uh, it's it's a hard thing to do, especially when you're 40 or 50 years old. You know? You've been doing that your whole life. Right. Yeah. You know. Can, um, do you think that there's room for a reorganization of the co-ops, and, and if there was, so it could be arranged in such a way where, um, like, if the um, the independents join, they'd be able to make it. You know, is there is there well, room for improvement, or is it a perfect system? Well, well, no, no, no. It's this. In fact, the, the, this this season here is our third season, and they call it an experiment. Uh, the, the board of fish did, and uh, this next board meeting, um, uh, gee whiz, we went through I don't know how many of these meetings over this co-op thing. It's getting pretty old, but, but uh, it it was uh, designed to try to. It's, it's like any business. I mean, you're going to have uh, unforeseen problems that's always got to be fixed, and we've had them every year. You know, we've, we've had crew problems that uh, some of us has really been meeting on the table about, and, and uh, you know, maintenance problems and uh, management problems, and, and it's, the, it's stuff that can be fixed if, you know, if everybody puts her two cents in and talks it over and but nothing's perfect I mean it doesn't matter you've got a hundred people somebody's gonna be mad all the time do you think it's getting better though well it, it's I don't know if better is the word uh, understanding it's it's getting more um, uh, easier to understand um, like I hate politics. I've been forced to get involved in it and uh, public speaking and all that stuff. And it's it uh, it's stuff that all we want to do is fish. You know, we don't want to be uh, most popular person in town or the state or whatever. We just want to fish. Um, that's good. Uh, probably that'll be probably the last thing that. Um, if uh, if this uh, co-op here works out, are they planning on uh, doing this in, in other parts of the state that are floundering as well? Well, that was that, I, I saw a thing here, uh, and I don't know who proposed it, but this Alaska um, uh, task force, fisheries task force, as they they put restrictions on new co-ops uh, evolving, you know, and uh, something I didn't understand, but uh, this place here is, I've heard processors say, is about as close as you can get to uh, fish farms, just just the, the location and the terminus here, and, and uh, all the fish come right here and go right up the lake up here. I mean, they're not scattered all over the place, you know, different systems like they have at the bay. So what what might work here might not work somewhere else. It and it has everything to do with people. You know how how much you want to get along with uh, another person and and try to make a, make a go of it. It's a, it's a tough deal. You know, there's there's been a lot of, of uh, hard feelings here, a lot. But, uh, it's a hard one. Okay, um, is there anything else that you want to add now that you have the opportunity to that I maybe didn't ask you a question about? No, I just hope... Uh, I just wish we'd start getting more fish in this system here. Something's not right. Everybody else is getting fish, and we're not. But, uh, that's that's our problem right now. The our biggest problem with this co-op.
we're we're not getting the volume. I mean, think we got uh, last two years it was a 1.1, 1.2 million was caught, and uh, forecasts were 1.5, 1.7, and and that would have made a heck of a difference. Uh, you know, to each permit holder, and it looks like we're right on track again to have another season like that. So, but, uh, no, this thing, this is not a perfect world here. It's learning every day. Something new's popping up, and it uh, it's going to take a little time. Okay.